G'day, Steve Morgan here. Uh, Friday, it's a Tackle Friday segment. This time we're coming to you from Grafton in northern New South Wales. It's right on the sort of the upper tidal limits of the Clarence River, which is one of Australia's premier East Coast bass fisheries. And this weekend is the Maui Gym Round of the 13 Fishing Bass Pro Series. Um, Clarence is, is a river that I've sort of done really poorly at in broom tournaments in the past, but I've done really well in bass tournaments. Uh, I'm not really that good at bass tournaments, but when bass are on a river, I sort of get it and I can make them, uh, I can at least find where the fish are and sometimes get them to bite. Uh, so I always look forward to the river rounds. We've got this, the Maui Gym round on the Clarence River, and that's followed by the Atomic round on the Richmond River straight after this event. Cool thing about the events is they're live scoreboard events. But, so for the next two days, then a gap of a day, and then the two days after that, you're going to be able to visit abt.org.au. You can see all the live scoreboards as we go during the day. I should be live for all of those four days uh, on this YouTube channel, so um, plenty of bass content coming up for you. Now, as I say, I'm not, a, I'm not the world's best bass fisherman. I'm an all right bass fisherman on the rivers, and I went out there today practicing. Um, and I learned a few things, and I've, of all the bass tackle that I brought, I didn't bring enough stuff that I needed to follow my instincts about what was happening on this place. Um, I like fishing uh, down river. I like fishing down between the Harbourwood Bridge and Lawrence on the river, which is probably the more salty, brimmy sort of areas of the river anyway. It's where I'd fish a lot in brim tournaments, so I know how a lot of it lays out. And the one thing I noticed today was there were no prawns. Um, normally the prawns, where it hits some of the shallow reefs, it, it brings them up, the birds are feeding on them. It was really dead today. There was actually no prawns at all I saw in the whole river, apart from up a couple of creeks, there were little jelly prawns jumping on the edge. But what there were a lot of, and what there always is at this time of the year on the East Coast, is mullet. And I'm pretty sure that the bass that I caught today were ones that were feeding on mullet. Now, obviously I came down, the last time I fished the Clarence, it was all at the top of a place called the Esk River, all clear water or clear stain, stain tannity water crankbaits. Um, I was never going to go to the Esk in this tournament if I could find bigger bass closer to the start. Um, I found a stretch of river where there were some bigger bass in, but they, I didn't catch one for four hours in practice this morning. But as soon as I worked out that they were eating mullet and not prawns, then I could modify my presentations. And luckily, I've been doing a lot of dewfish live scoping in the Brisbane River. Check out the photo here of, uh, of one of the dewies I've caught uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm throwing some of Rapala's crush shitty heavy hitters for those. And luckily, I had one of them left in my boat. So as soon as I gave up on prawn presentations and got into mullet presentations, um, stuff started really getting interesting. In fact, that was what I caught most of my fish on today. It's the Rapala, the four inch heavy hitter, uh, and it's on a barragey head. That's uh, about a 5.0 extra heavy hook and a half ounce TTG head that's on it. So luckily I had that left over. I'd, I'd actually rigged up a whole lot of dew live scoping baits and, and I left them back at work, but this one was still you know, sitting in my tackle on my, um, my tackle tight and magnetic tray there. I picked it up, I thought I'm gonna give that a go to see if they're eating mullet and guess what they were. Um, caught a few fish today in practice then, throwing throwing this big bait, that's a big bait for bass, a 5.0 hook and a 4 inch bait, it's more of a mangrove jack, well Nick Horn designed that for mangrove jack, so throwing that around on um, on 20 pound leader, um, the 13 fishing concept A reel, oh no sorry, the concept C2, it says on the side there, I don't know, I don't know what the models are, um, this is on one of the prototype rods that the guys have, um, so I went to the briefing. The briefing was at uh, Grafton Firearms and Fishing Tackle. If you've never been there and you're passing through Grafton, 100% worth a look in because it looks like a garden shed and it is one of the best stock tackle shops on the east coast of Australia. It's really cool. Dan and the guys at Grafton Firearms and Tackle, they hosted us for the briefing, but luckily I got there, set up early for the briefing, and I got to do a little bit of shopping. So this was literally the only bait that I had on the, on, in the boat. Um, I sponged a few more packets of the, the heavy hitters of Mick, uh, and I've got some, I had to buy some jig heads for them. So, so I'm not running those really heavy barra wide gate hooks. I've bought a few jig heads here. I'm gonna try some of these. These are the, um, the Domeki jigs. They've got a little underspin on them in the dirty water. Might give them a little bit of, uh, little bit of extra flash in around that half ounce size. I've got some of the Tackle Tactics. This is a 5.0 hook. 
uh, what's that? That's uh, five, five eighths of an ounce, a bit over half ounce jig heads there with a 5 hook. And then I've got some of the, uh, these are a 5 uh, one ounce Daiwa jig head there as well. So I've got some heavy heads to get it down in the, in the, uh, the heavy current. I'm gonna match them up with those, uh, with those heavy hitters and make myself up some mullet imitations. Must have never fished a bass tournament where I'm uh, imitating mullet instead of, uh, instead of prawns to catch the fish. So gonna be big baits, gonna be, uh, gonna be seeing fish on the live scope tomorrow and hopefully putting a limit of five fish in the box. Um, didn't catch a fish for the first four hours today. When I worked out what they were eating, I caught four fish in about maybe an hour. So left that spot alone. Um, there's a few spots in the river. Uh, not necessarily the fish hang on the rock. They hang in open water within a kilometer of the rock. They just a few areas where the bass all school up. They're schooling up with the mullet. So sometimes on the live scope, it looks like there's 10,000 fish there, but none of them are bass, they're all mullet. So away we go. Now another incidental purchase I bought in there. I've got a couple of these already, but I thought this one looks so much like a mullet. This is nearly exactly the size of the mullet I think they're eating. So one of these uh, Molex glides, I'll probably put one of Matt Fraser's chin nuts on that. I'm gonna have that rigged up on one of the baits tomorrow. You can see them pretty good on the live scope. You can actually see them with their side to side action. And we're gonna run that as well. A Couple of other things uh, I've got for this event. Josh from Shimano sent me, uh, he was tired of watching me land fish in the short handle. I used to have a, an environment with a little handle this long, but now it's the long handled uh, environment. If you don't know, ABT are mandating maximum mesh sizes next year. So just to stop the tails of the fins splitting, um, we can't have the big mesh uh, as of next year, but I'm getting ready early. These environments are fantastic on the fish. They're a legacy of Dave Ir Irvine. He really loved his uh, fish care and that environment is uh, the gold standard when it comes to fish care. But we've got a nice long handled one this time uh, in preparation for next year. The other cool bit of gear I've got on, and I'm gonna put a, a photo in the cutaway now because it's dark outside and I can't film it, but I got from Rob Payne during the week one of his fish obsessed mounts for my Garmin Livescope. Now, what it does is the normal factory mount only gives you one choice of angle, uh, especially in perspective mode. I love using perspective mode when I'm looking at the first 15 feet of the water column. And it sits about eight degrees down. And if I want to see my Lua splash down, I have to physically bend that bracket up a little bit. So I've normally bend my bracket so it's up. Uh, and I can see my Lua splash down at the same time seeing the fish down deep underwater. But this one, uh, Robert got me made a special one up which has five point something degree increments. So I can actually get that perspective mode and have it either level with the surface and I can go click, 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 looking down further and further each time. Um, and that precision in the adjustment of, the, uh, of that live scope transducer, I think is really gonna help my fishing. Um, you can see it tomorrow, I should be able to have the live scope in bed going in my live stream. And again, on the highlights that I'll cut up tomorrow night for it. But um, I, I think I should be able to maybe dial in that live scope a little bit better um, with that much more adjustability in that mount. Um, one thing when I mounted that, the fish obsessed mount on my boat. I went out one week during the week catching dewies and I was getting a heap of interference on it. And I go, you know what? I reckon it's because that sort of, that mount isn't grounded properly to the to the shaft of the motor. So it's got a titanium shaft, my power pole move. Um, I took out the rubber, the ru there's a rubber like mat you put underneath it just so it holds the shaft properly. I undid it, took that out, clamped it straight onto the shaft Metal on metal and that interference 100% went. So uh, if you're going to get one of those fish obsessed mounts and you're getting uh, you're getting those problems um, with the power pole move, mine was because it's a metal shaft. Uh, I find removing that rubber grommet solved that problem. So um, we're all dialed in. We're ready to go tomorrow. You know I'm dialed in when I've only got two rods to rig. I'm going to have a couple of those mullet imitations. I'm catching decent sized bass. I want to catch them all day. So a couple of those 13 fishing rods and reels with the mullet imitations and that heavy hitter on there, hopefully is going to do the trick. You know how fishing tournaments go though? By nine o'clock tomorrow morning, it could be all chucked out the window and I could be doing something totally different. The only way you're going to find out, watch the live stream tomorrow. From 6.30 tomorrow, we take off at Corcoran Park here at, uh, at Grafton. Um, and half an hour later, we'll be fishing somewhere. So uh, join us tomorrow on the water. Hope you enjoyed Tackle Fridays and we'll catch you next week.